the weather outside gets colder, the action inside Worthen Arena gets hotter and heats up. As tonight, we got a great basketball game on tap here on SportsLink TV. The Grambling State Tigers come to Muncie to face the Ball State Cardinals. Hello, everybody. I'm Luke Martin alongside my partner in crime tonight, the phenom, Connor Onion. Connor, it is safe to say we're only three games into this basketball season for Ball State, but this is a much improved basketball team under second year head coach James Whitford. Through only three games, we have learned a lot about this basketball team, and it starts with the new faces for the Cardinals. Eight newcomers, including the return of fifth year senior Matt Kamenecki, but it starts with the freshman class led by Sean Sellers and Jeremy Tyler. First with Sean Sellers, 22 points per game through the first three. Mac West Player of the Week honors after his 26 point debut against Utah a few weeks back. And Jeremy Tyler, much of the same. Just under 16 points per game. And last time the Cardinals were here in Worthen Arena against IU Kokomo, he went for 23 against his brother, Jerome Campbell. Now let's pay attention to the game tonight, Connor. The Cardinals, a tough loss on the road this weekend in overtime down in Indianapolis against the IUPUI Jaguars. If they want to beat Grambling State tonight, let's first look at your players to watch first for the visiting Grambling State Tigers. For Grambling State, I'm looking at Richard Freeman. They need to get him back on track. He's their second leading scorer, around eight points per game, but he really struggled last Thursday against Purdue. Zero points, he was 0 of 5 from the floor in 27 minutes of action and turned the basketball over five times. Freeman is a long left-handed player. He's solid for mid-range. He can beat you down low as well. But defensively, he's a rim protector at six foot eight. He uses his length to his advantage. You have to get a body on him if you're the Cardinals on defense because he will crash the offensive glass as well. So he's a guy to look out for. But the guy that could possibly negate him for the Cardinals is Rocco Belcaster. Both you and I, Luke, didn't think we would see him this early. He was a practice squad player a season ago as he took a red shirt. And in that time that he took, a, took some time away, 15 to 20 pounds that he added on to his frame. He improved his outside touch. A great complimentary player for the Cardinals off of the bench. While his man-to-man -man defense, it does need some work. He has the size to rebound and then turn it around the other way with the quickness and the ball handling to take the ball down the floor himself as well. Well, the only thing left to cover, Connor, is are you ready to go? I'm ready to go. Well, Connor Onion's ready to go. That means tip-off is next. Ball State, Grambling State, men's basketball here on SportsLink TV. If you sign up for DirecTV's latest deal, prepare to be blindsided. Because they'll double your rate before you know it. And you'll find you're locked into a two-year contract that could cost you over 3,000 bucks. That's why the smart choice is Xfinity. You can see all the best action in football all season long. With no surprises, don't get blindsided by DirecTV. Call 1-800-XFINITY today. Oh, it's only November. Hi, Santa. Hello, Claire. Black Friday means sweet deals. A new Ford with a $1,000 Amazon.com gift card. It comes with almost any Ford you want. Everybody wants a new Ford. A great way to start your holiday shopping. Now get a Fusion with a $1,000 Amazon.com gift card. Or get zero for 72 plus 1,500 cash back. Or lease for just $189 a month. Hurry before they're all gone. Fox College Sports, CBS, ESPN. Impressive clients for college students. We write, direct, and produce our Emmy-nominated programs daily. We even designed our own virtual set. Ball State, education redefined. Welcome back inside Johnny Worthen Arena as the starting lineups are being introduced as we're about ready for tip-off between the Grambling State Tigers and the Ball State Cardinals. Let's meet the starting lineups tonight. Grambling State comes in one and two on the season from the Southwestern Athletic Conference. The SWAC, Connor, when you look at that starting lineup, what stands out to you? First, the guy I mentioned in pregame, that was Richard Freeman. Got to get him back on track, eight points per game, but also A.J. Shine, he's going to be running the show. The leading scorer for this Grambling State team, they really struggle offensively, come in worst in the country, only averaging 42 points per game. So they need to put the ball in the basket if they want any chance here tonight. And looking at the Cardinals, Matt Kemenecki, Kayla Mallory stepping in due to the suspension of Xavier Turner, Franco House, Jeremy Tyler, and Sean Sellers. 
a familiar cast of Ball State Cardinals with Kayla Mallory, the Muncie local Muncie Central product, getting another start, his second start in a row after starting this weekend against IUPUI. Let's meet the head coaches first for the visiting Grambling State Tigers. His name is Sean Walker. He's in his first season at Grambling State, one and two. Came from Elizabeth City State, where he was a graduate in 1994. Really doing a great job in his first year, Connor, trying to get things turned around as we are ready for the opening tip in Worthen Arena as Franco House bats it back to Kayla Mallory. And we're ready to go, Connor Onion. Kayla Mallory patrolling the point, getting a second career start. Be interested to see how he protects the basketball. The Cardinals had trouble turning the basketball over against IUPUI on Saturday in their overtime loss. You mentioned that overtime loss, a tough one for the Cardinals is Kevin Ecke down low tries to get a nice bucket for the Cardinals, but look at Franco House aggressively sending it back out and resetting for Ball State. House has shed some weight, 30 pounds since coming to Ball State, but still tremendously strong. He's a former tight end in high school and was recruited to play tight end, but he chose basketball after Billy Taylor recruited him here. Jeremy Tyler misses the lay-in, but Matt Kamenecki almost had a nice put-back dunk. As still scoreless here, 40 seconds in. Mitch and the Cardinals trying to even their record at two and two. Facing Grambling State for the third time in school history as they hold a 2-0 advantage as Sean Sellers, that pass goes out of bounds. And you mentioned those turnover problems against IUPUI. They start off tonight with a turnover issue. Connor. They have to protect the basketball. They're averaging 19 on the season. They averaged 17 a year ago, and they were worst in the country in 2013, 2014. So not a good start controlling the basketball for the Cardinals, but a point of emphasis for them moving forward. As Richard Freeman, Onions player to watch, kicks it way to the outside to Telvin Marshall. As Grambling State going to try to get the first basket here of the game. Is down low, and that's going to be rebounded by Franco House. So here quickly come the Cardinals as Kayla Mallory, <laughs> a little bit of a, throws it out of bounds, but it was going to be touched by Grambling State. So Ball State will maintain possession. Good to see Mallory playing with a sense of urgency. The Cardinals do like to play fast. And in his second career start, you know Mallory is coming out with a sense of urgency, but he can't force things too much. He has to play within himself, and he forced a pass in there to Kamenecki that time. And Kayla Mallory entering the season was the fourth point guard on the depth chart as Sean Sellers. You mentioned his great start, Connor, and he's off to a great start tonight. Drills his first three points. Shooting 69% from downtown coming in. He leaves off right, or he picks up right where he left off, rather. As Grambling State now goes to work. As that's Richard Freeman, drives through the paint, misses the short jumper. That's going to be taken away from Franco House in the lay-in by Telvin Marshall. Mentioned the left hand of Freeman coming in. He favors that left hand most times when he's driving straight down the center of the lane. He's going to go to that left side. If he can shield it and force him to the right side, he's much less effective. Tyler misses the three. Tyler coming into the game, averaging around 15.7 points per game. There's a little Coach Whitford there on the sideline, barking out instructions to his Cardinals. Takes a lot of pride in their defensive effort, Connor. As Richard Freeman gets Franco House to fall on his back, and that's going to be a foul on Grambling Grand State. And Cardinals will get the basketball. There it is right there. Marshall working the right side of the floor. That's not his game. That's not him. He doesn't want to step back and take jump shots from 15 to 17 feet. He wants to get to the basket, force him to the right side, force him to play outside of 12 feet. And like I said, much less effective. Kyle Williams picked up that foul. It's the first of the game and first for Grambling State. As Sellers, a nice pass down low to Franco House. That's probably his greatest attribute. Playing on the wing at six foot six, he has great vision. He's usually going to draw a defender around the six three to six four range. He can see over the top, and that allows him to be a great passer from the wing. Coach Whitford mentioned to me at shoot around the day that over the weekend at IUPUI. It was the most aggressive he's seen Sean Sellers. He definitely shows a sense of maturity for only being in his fourth college basketball game. And that comes from playing four years at Greensburg where he was a starter all four years, 93 and 11 in his time as a Pirate. 
Sellers will try another three, and he knocks it down. And look at Sean Walker. He is livid with his Tigers with 16.36 to go here in the first half. He was not happy at all with that three-pointer. Well, no rhythm, no problem for Sean Sellers as it doesn't matter where he pulls up from. He tried the right side, splashed it home from the right wing. This time he tries the left side. No rhythm, he's not coming off a screen. He just catches, shoots, and puts it home. Great form from the freshman. I think John Walker's going, I told you he could shoot the three-point ball. Get out on him. With his length, there's just not much you can do about it. You can put a hand in his face, but he's just going to go over the top of you and shoot it in your face anyway. Well, Grambling State coming in, tough loss earlier this week. Lost to Purdue 82 to 30 last week, should say, as we're still here early on Monday this week. Just a game they could never find a rhythm. Of course, Purdue, known for their defense in West Lafayette, Indiana, one of the many big teams they play in non conference action. Really struggled with the size of Isaac Haas. He went for 17. Haas and A.J. Hammonds have, have proved to be a nice one two do on the front court for Purdue this season. As a nice dunk by Kyle Williams. And it will be an and one, so he'll go to the free throw line to try to make it a three-point play. Williams known for his defensive prowess, getting it done here offensively as a great wingspan at six foot nine, only a freshman, so some of his better ball ahead of him, but his athleticism really a strength. Mentions the six foot nine freshman from Long Island, New York. There's a two-point lead for Ball State as the three-point play. Does not go for three points as Kevin Eckie gets the rebound. Cardinals love to push it, Connor. That is kind of the mentality of the Coach Whippard offense, and we see that early on. Well, it's that Pac-12 style that we're used to seeing. Worked under Sean Miller at Arizona for a few years. Like to push the basketball. Tight man-to-man -man defense on the perimeter. It's a really exciting brand of basketball to watch. As Franco House got fouled. And we'll take another look at it here on the replay as Freeman gets it right on the hand. Two-point lead early here for Ball State. As again, the Cardinals right now grambling in their man-to-man -man defense, Connor. They switch it up. They play a lot of man and zone. It'll be a good test for the Cardinals. Seeing some zone here tonight because they will see some in conference play against Eastern Michigan. That takes us to our first time out here in Worthen Arena, and the Cardinals lead it 8 to 6. You're watching Ball State men's basketball on SportsLink TV. Ball State SportsLink is bigger than ever. The best stories in Ball State sports, live game production, award winning studio shows, and more. It's only from Ball State Sports Link, an immersive learning production. Dancing is my passion. I never imagined it could help children with autism, transforming their lives and mine. I've learned I can make an impact that will last a lifetime. I love to dance and was born to teach. Ball State, education redefined. Get ready, unsuspecting TVs and laptops in a U-verse home. We're about to compare you to Xfinity. When two HD movies are playing in a U-verse home, their fastest internet slows down. Two HD movies in an Xfinity home? The internet stays fast because it's 2014. Hello? Ugh, so last season. Exactly. Fast never goes out of fashion. And as the clock ran down, I shanked the jumper and took the big trophy home. And Aunt Jane. I guess I did all right. But look at them. Cradle of coaches, Hall of Famers. And dad ran in the Olympic trial. Your cousin played in the Sweet 16. And how about the College World Series? That was awesome. If only I you can. You both can. I'm already proud of you. Now, who gets these? Me. The Mid-American Conference. Generations of champions since 1946. Cardinals with the early lead here in the first half, eight to six, River Grambling State, as they are trying to bounce back after a tough overtime loss against IUPUI over the weekend. And 
Connor, when we kind of look at the statistics here early on, what stands out to you here in about the first, under about the first five minutes here? Well, definitely half. Sean Sellers. He started perfect from the field, two of two from downtown, both the right wing three and a left wing three. If you're Grambling State looking to make an adjustment, I would jam him coming off of curl screens, put a forearm in his chest, not allow him much breathing room. He does have the range to knock it down from 30 plus feet, but still, you got to follow him on screens. You can't work underneath the screens with Sean Sellers. As Chase Cormier brings it up for Grambling State. Coach Whitford really admires how hard Grambling plays despite their results. A program in rebuilding mode. Well, here tonight, if they want to beat the Cardinals, they need to slow the basketball game down. We talked about the pace of the Cardinals and, and wanting to get out in the front court and work the fast break. Grambling State, a team that struggles to score the basketball, if they can keep this game within the 40s, within the 50s, they give themselves a chance. But if it's in the 70s or 80s, forget about it. That's a turnover on Grambling State as they step on the out-of-bounds line, and now the Cardinals will get it back as that will be the second turnover for Grambling State tonight. Seeing Ty Wilburn here for the first time this season at the point. Rather, Francis Kiapole. Francis Kiapole into the game. I was going to say there, Connor. <laughs> <laughs> he, I was going to say, yeah, pretty good eyes. As Jeremy Tyler tries to knock in a three, but short hits the front of the rim. And that will be a foul against Ball Stick. Only 19, but my eyesight is starting to fail me. <laughs> <laughs> It's all right. We Wilburn, all, we all Wilburn of course, it. down early on with, with an ankle <laughs> injury. Has a boot, has a boot on his ankle. As Bo Calhoun two, checks out of the game, and Matt Kimiek, Kimineki checks back in. Excuse me. Kiapwe though did see his first action in a Cardinals uniform against IUPUI, playing in 14 minutes. Didn't make much of an impact as he couldn't find the scoring column, but still good to see him healthy and on the floor. Is A.J. Shine, what a heck of an athlete he is. Number one for Grambling State. As a turnover, again on Grambling State, great pressure by the Cardinal defense. As Sean Walker looked on, not too happy. This is a, this is a good game to get Kiapue involved because it's a non-conference game. He's still coming back from injury. And he's really thrust into the lineup for the Cardinals with the suspension of Xavier Turner. They can move him along a little bit more quickly because Jeremiah Davis out with an injury and Xavier Turner with the suspension. They need him now, whereas if Xavier Turner was out there, you could sort of use him as you so please. And today at shoot-around, they really worked with Francis Kiapua. Even after shoot-around was done around 3 o'clock, he was still in the gym about 5 o'clock, just running through the offense, trying to get used to that one position. Well, he's still trying to get his legs underneath him. In the preseason, coming in in the summer, he battled a knee injury, so still trying to get his mind right. Maybe not as confident as we'll see him in December and in January, but still these non-conference games against teams like Grambling State, that's why you play them, to get guys like Francis Kiapue comfortable in the Ball State system. Matt Kemenecki misses his first free throw. The lone senior on the Cardinal team this year from just up north in Clarkston, Michigan. Of course, he returns. Speaking of injury after, issues. Yeah, after <laughs> last year with his wrist injury, sitting out all of last year, huge blow for Coach Whiffer in his first year. His junior season, he was hampered a little bit as well with a back injury. He did play in 27 games, but hampered by the back, then the wrist held him out all season last year, but they really need him. The only senior on the roster, he's played in 77 career games, so his experience down low with an undersized Ball State team is crucial for their success this year. Both teams right now struggling shooting the basketball ever since the media timeout, but Grambling State and Raymond Brown tells me to be quiet there for a moment <laughs> as he drills a nice floater in the way. Well, Raymond Brown, he's a guy that is a little bit under-recruited, he eventually chose Grambling State. He did have looks from LSU. They never offered him a scholarship, but he did have a chance to perhaps walk on at a higher Division I program, but he ultimately chose Grambling State, and he's still, as a sophomore, trying to make his mark at the SWAC level. He has one field goal tonight, and 
He had three on the season entering tonight. As Belcaster knocks down a three in the corner. Well, I, think, I think you knew something saying he was your player to watch. There's the improved touch that I'm talking about. You leave him wide open, he will shoot it. He's not going to kill you from downtown. He's not going to go for 30 points from downtown, but he will knock it down if you leave him open as he did there. And Kemenecki is going to get called for a push down low. As that will be Kemenecki's first foul. Rocco's really transformed his body. He fits more of the mold of what the Cardinals are looking for. They like those lengthy wing players. He can also slide into the post and play the four. So he's transformed his body. And while not being recruited by Coach Whitford, he still looks like a Coach Whitford recruit. As Grambling State misses a short basket after a nice drive through the lane by the Tigers. So now they'll try to get better here on the defensive side of the floor. Big Gill. Maybe a little bit outside his range. Have, <laughs> haven't seen him really come into his own yet as far as the offensive end is concerned. He is a good defender. He is a big body down low, but as time moves on, he's adjusting from the junior college level. He played two years at Owens Community College in Toledo, Ohio. His offensive game should flourish. As a traveling violation called on Grambling State. You now, kind of going back to your point, as you see Caleb Mallory there on the screen, Caleb and Rocco, who are both on the floor right now, they combined for eight minutes and scored two points heading into this season. Well, they're going to have to play more of a role this season, especially Caleb Mallory. I know flipping on that Utah game a few Fridays back, surprised to see Caleb Mallory even out on the court, but he played well. He, he's protecting the basketball right now, and that's what the Cardinals need. He's limited his turnovers to under one per game. So while he didn't have much experience this season ago, he's making smart decisions and not trying to force things and playing within himself. I mean, just think about it, being the fourth point guard in the depth chart, and now you're starting. And look at him go through the lane, but he just misses. As Grambling State now will try to get a fast break. Nice move by Telvin Marshall. He's now got six points on the night. Talked about Vic Gill playing at the junior college level. Telvin Marshall, another guy who played at the junior college level at Southern University, making, making an impact here for Grambling State in his junior season eligibility-wise. 11-10, Cardinals lead it as Big Gill tries to maneuver, power his way down low. But back come the Tigers looking to take their first lead of the game. And he just passed it to the official. Oh, my goodness. Wow. That's going to be a turnover. Unfortunately, the official is not wearing a Grambling State jersey. Good hands by the official. 11-10, Cardinals, as we head to break. You're watching. Ball State men's basketball on SportsLink TV. The Mid-American Conference. We come from many places. We're as different as the games that we champion. But behind every great play, beneath every uniform, lies something even greater. Because the real goal is building better people. The Mid-American Conference, sportsmanship for life since 1946. watch my DVR shows anyway. Take your DVR shows anywhere. The X1 Entertainment Operating System, only from Xfinity. Welcome back inside Johnny Worthen Arena. 11-10, Ball State leads it. This, let's toss it over to our sideline correspondent tonight, Matt Craig. Well, the students and staff of Ball State Sports Link would like to thank Robin's Apparel for your screen printing or embroidery needs. Trust Robin's Apparel online at robins-apparel.com. 
Thank you, Matt Craig. I'm sure the folks at Robbins Apparel appreciate that. 11-10 Cardinals lead us. What a play right before break, Connor. The official's getting some action. He's getting some action, and I don't think he has the ability to drive the basketball. That's not what the scouting report told me, so he just took it, called a timeout, and, I and, I don't and let, let Grambling State go back and yeah. talk over to Sean Walker because they need to figure some things out if they're tossing the ball to the official. Yeah, I don't think Sean Walker, uh, I don't think that was drawn up on the sideline. <laughs> I'm sure they talked about that during the break. As Franco House again powers his way through the paint. Clearly, Coach Whitford didn't go to the official screen after uh, after the after timeout play, not pulling a page out of Sean Walker's book from the last possession for Hamlin State. <laughs> Now the Grambling State offense really struggling on offense this year, points production-wise. Mentioned how they only scored 30 the whole game against the Boilermakers last week. As Jeremy Tyler misses a short corner jumper. And look at that defensive effort by Grambling State. This will be an interesting call, and they're going to call a block. Well, Grambling State not looking to slow things down, looking to play at their pace that they like, and not really playing to the style of Ball State as they're they're just exchanging fast break possessions with Ball State, trying to get out into the front court and move quickly. And you see the replay there. I want the official saw is now Raymond Brown heads to the free throw strap and. He's really struggled this season from the charity stripe. Coming into today, only 25%. So if you're going to foul somebody in the open floor, he's the guy to foul. <laughs> we'll make sure Coach Whitford's getting an audio feed of this broadcast. I'm sure he hears you. Might, uh, might, might consider implementing a hack -a brown <laughs> strategy. hack -a brown And it's 13-11, Ball State. As now you'll see this, this pressure defense. Cardinals worked on this in shoot-around earlier today. It's a diamond and one with a man at the point pressuring the ball handler once it comes into play. Jeremy Tyler showcasing his talents from downtown. Well, offensively, you've seen it. The Cardinals freshmen hadn't have, haven't had any problem adjusting to the Division I level, but it's defensively that they still have a ways to go because high school basketball, you've heard it in the movie Hoosiers, the basket is still 10 feet above the floor. But still, defensively, guys are much quicker, much stronger. And offensively, you can still hit open jump shots if you're Sean Sellers and Jeremy Tyler. Now it's that extra element of defending at a Division I level. Tyler was 0 for 5 in this game until that point as Caleb Mallory misses the three. And now Grambling will push him. As Mark Gary loses the handle, and now they'll get it right back as it's Mark Gary. <laughs> he lost it, he says, I'll get it right back. And the Tigers lay it in. Well, that's on Caleb Mallory. You want to push the basketball, but you can't force it. He throws it in the middle of three black uniforms. And that's just not the smart pass. Mallory, at only five foot eight, he's not going to throw an over the head pass over defenders. Just went over the halfway point here in the first half. Mallory had an open look at it. But Bell Caster says, I got your back, buddy. Well, that's probably Caleb Mallory's biggest strength, driving and kicking off of a high ball screen. He gets the high screen from Franco House. He drives, gets to the logo, then kicks it out for a shooter on the outside. That's exactly what the Cardinals want to do offensively to free up their shooters. Bell Caster, two for two tonight from downtown. I think he knows Connor Onion picked him for his player to watch. Just have an inkling as Mallory gets bombarded. As Alvy knocked out of bounds. And so now checking into the game for Ball State. You'll see Sean Sellers, Bo Calhoun, and Big Gill. Big guy number 21. And Big Gill's a guy, Connor. Six foot seven, 222 from Toronto, Ontario. He was a third team All American at that D2 junior college level. And he averaged 19 points. 13 rebounds. He has the ability to score the basketball. He hasn't showcased it yet this season. Only two points per game through three, but he's getting a look here inside. And he will have an opportunity at the free throw line as he gets fouled on the shot. 
really his biggest strengths do come defensively, which we have seen in the first three games. He has the ability to score, like we mentioned, but top 10 nationally in the junior college ranks in blocks and rebounds, using his size to his advantage. As Gill knocks home the first free throw tonight for Ball State and for himself. They've really worked with him in the summer, trying to mold him into a similar player as Rocco Belcaster. They're, they're similar in size, Bick Gill at 6'7", as is Rocco Belcaster, and they want to use him in that same role. He just needs to develop that outside touch like Belcaster has in the offseason. Makes them both two for two as the Cardinals increase their lead to eight. Here in the first half. Cormier brings it down, and that's going to be an offensive foul. That's going to go against number 12, Kyle Williams. Cormier is quick at the point, and that's going to be a great test for Francis Chiapue guarding him with a knee injury. It's tough to come back and still be laterally quick in trusting that knee. So he's going to get tested in just a second game as Francis Chiapue as to how healthy he is. Mitchell Kiapaway trying to learn the point guard position due to the Cardinals being down at that position with Jeremiah Davis, of course, being out eight to ten weeks, won't be back till January. As Bo Calhoun says, we don't need a point guard when you got Bo Calhoun lays it in, 23-13. But Grambling State does a nice job in responding. They're not shying away from this Ball State team. They could be discouraged after their 50-plus point loss against Purdue the other night, but they've come out firing here in the early going. They are battling the Ball State Cardinals here in the first half. It's 23-15. We're going to take a short break, but we got much more coming up here in the first half. You're watching Ball State Men's Basketball on Sportslink TV. It's been a journey that, you know, you, it seems like it's been a long time ago. You know, every time you see the scar on her face, we kind of remind her, you know, that what's real important in life. You just know you, you've got to go in and you got to be strong. You go do it and you get it taken care of. And, and she was like that from the beginning. For her to be so mature about it, for her to be so strong about it, and I think that gave everybody else confidence and that gave everybody else strength. The Cardinals tonight, three-point shooting, Connor. They're lighting it up from downtown. They sure are. Second in the Mid-American Conference through three games and three-point shooting at 45%. Much of the same tonight. Five of nine, good for 55%. But talked about Sean Sellers. He's been a guy lighting it up from downtown as well. Mentioned he's 69% coming in. He's two of two tonight with six points. And the Cardinals, 24 threes in their first three contests, the most since 2004 when they had 25 in their first three games. And the Cardinals are also increased that shooting percentage up 14 percentage points from a year ago. 45% as Connor mentioned, they were down to 31% last year. You have to be careful though, if you live and die by the three point basket, you're gonna win games with the three, but if you go cold, no doubt. you can be blown out of the gym very, very quickly. As you see Sean Walker looking on at his Grambling State Tigers trailing by eight. Well, they're halfway home to their total that they had against the Boilermakers last week. They only scored 30. That's right. Pushing the pace a little bit more. <laughs> Trying Sellers. to run on the Cardinals who are shorthanded. Knocks down the first of two free throws coming for the young man from Greensburg, Indiana. Connor, I know we talked about it off the floor and before our broadcast tonight. I even asked Coach Whitford about how much stock he put into Sean and Jeremy and the success they had at the high school level and if that means anything at the next level. And Coach Whitford simply said, you know what, I don't necessarily put a lot of stock in it, but those guys played big roles in big games on huge teams that had a lot of great success. And that matters at this level. It does, and 
they played with great players alongside them too. So they were in a competitive nature every single day in practice. As at Greensburg, Sean Sellers played with Ryan Wellich, a 2015 recruit that will get high Division I offers. And then, of course, Jeremy Tyler playing at Arsenal Tech, played with Trey Lyles, who is now playing at Kentucky and doing some damage early for the number one team in the nation. Cardinals first time with a double-digit lead the night, 11 points over the Tigers. As they're trying to force another Grambling State turnover, and they do. It's the seventh of the night. As now Francis Kiapoe will bring it up. Another guy, the Canada connection there. Both him and Big Gill. Not naturally a point guard, so again, he's somebody we're monitoring here tonight, how he responds running the show. Matt Kamenecki bulldozes his way through the Tiger defense. Can't knock the shot home, but he will head to the free throw line and shoot two free throws. He's not the smoothest of players as Kamenecki, but he does have a big frame at six foot eight in his senior season, but really the strength and just being tenacious on the offensive and defensive glass are his strengths. Well, Kamenecki is still trying to break through for his first points tonight, but eight rebounds already for Matt Kamenecki, and he's coming off of his first second first double-double of the season, second of his career against IUPUI. A career high with 15 rebounds, also splashed in 11 points, and they tried to trap him in that game against IUPUI, and with this six foot eight frame, he was just able to toss it over the top and created some plays for his teammates, keeping the Cardinals in that basketball game. As Kemenecki misses both. Struggling from the free throw line here against the Tigers. So that's Talvin Marshall, the leading scorer tonight for Grambling State. Can't knock home that jumper. And that will be knocked out of bounds off of the Tigers. Great play there by Big Gill. Cardinals still need to get a body on a body there. I know Rocco Belcaster overran the rebound, but he's just running straight to the rim. Instead, he has to turn around, put his backside in the front side of a Grambling State Tiger, and secure the rebound and make the fundamental play. The Cardinals are fortunate to have the basketball back in their possession. As Sellers will cut his way through, and there's Francis Chiappoli drills the three-pointer. That's where he's best. He's best off of the basketball. That's why it's going to be a challenge for him to play the point guard position because when he played at St. Thomas More, he left there shooting 42% from downtown, the career leader in three-point baskets. He's more of a two-guard, but he's forged into that one position with Xavier Turner going down. This is only his second game. He debuted Saturday in Indianapolis. But if they can draw up sets where he dishes it off in the wing, he cuts through the lane opposite a ball side, they can swing the ball around the perimeter and open up shooting lanes for him. He thought about the three there. <laughs> he wanted to take it. He was wise not to. As that's going to be a turnover on the Cardinals as it's thrown away out of bounds. So Grambling State will get the basketball back, trailing by 14. As they now have 10 fouls here in the first half. Ball State only with five. You mentioned the struggles of the Tigers, Connor. They've lost 46 of their last 50 road contest, which is one of the reasons why they made a change at the head coach position, trying to get things turned around. They got, they got themselves off the schneid. Their, their losing ways have been record-breaking, literally. They snapped a 45-game Division I losing streak on February the 10th, a season ago, and they finished 2012-2013 winless. So in the two years, under their former head coach, wasn't very pretty, 5-52 and 52 in those two seasons. That was Joseph Price. He was 5-52 and 52 in two seasons, including that 0-28 season. So Grambling State trying to move past that, but right now they're trying to cut into this 14-point lead, but the Cardinals with the basketball, and it's going to be hard to, and Jeremy Tyler's going to be shooting the basketball like that. You see Tevin Marshall look over to the bench, and he show, he's showing a little bit of frustration, but he has to hedge out on the ball screen. He has to help out the man that is receiving the curl screen. Instead, Jeremy Tyler's left all alone from straight away. He's going to knock that down most of the time. 21 of Ball State's 32 points have come behind the arc tonight. You're not going to complain when they go in. <laughs> That's right. Do you have open shots? 
and you're missing them, you can live with that. Nice fake and drive in the lane. Well, that starts with Bo Calhoun. Wow, Telvin Marshall. That starts with Bo Calhoun. A poor closeout on the wing. Needs to chop his feet, get in an athletic position. But instead, he comes out flat-footed. No bend in the knees, and this guy drives right past him and dishes off for an easy score. As Sellers can't finish. So now the Tigers trying to cut in to this Ball State lead here, and that's going to be a defensive foul on the Cardinals, which takes us to our last media break here in the first half. Cardinals lead it 32-19. You're watching Ball State Men's Basketball on Sportslink TV. Today, the phone company is nickel and diming you. But tomorrow, you could be saving a fortune. Save on your home phone bill with Xfinity Voice from Comcast. Plus, text from your home number and save on your wireless bill. Switch to Xfinity Voice with unlimited talk and text for $19.99 a month for 12 months. Or step up to an Xfinity X1 triple play and save even more. Call 1-800-XFINITY today. Hundreds of real-world interviews at Ball State helped me realize the responsibility that comes with being in front of the camera. Society needs passionate journalists. Now I'm on air in D.C. with the whole world watching. Ball State, education redefined. Covering the Olympics in London as a student and seeing my work in the Chicago Tribune. That experience jump-started my career in New York City at Time Magazine and developed me into a true visual storyteller. Ball State, education redefined. The Mid-American Conference. We come from many places. We're as different as the games that we champion. But behind every great play, beneath every uniform, lies something even greater. Because the real goal is building better people. The Mid-American Conference. Sportsmanship for life since 1946. 32-19, Cardinals lead. Or the Tigers with 3-11 to go in the first half. Connor, how about we throw it to our social guy? Let's do it. Let's, let's throw it to Matt Craig. Matt, how are you doing tonight, our good friend? I'm doing fantastic. And to all of our loyal Sportslink TV viewers out there, I just want to say I am eagerly awaiting your tweets. Uh, go ahead and follow, give us a follow at BSU Sportslink on Twitter or search us on Facebook, Ball State Sportslink. And please tweet at me. I will tweet back. And if your tweets are creative enough, they will end up on the air. Oh, that's a lot wow. of pressure. Man. Some creativity is involved. I might get out my... <laughs> my iPhone and tweet out. Let me get my iPhone out here. I want to make it to the big show with, with that BSU Sports Link. <laughs> well over 12,000 followers now. I think that would help the, the follow to following ratio. Onion always worried about that follower following ratio on Twitter. That some some people have ambition in life. <laughs> I'm just after a blue check mark. <laughs> you may get it tonight. When you go home. I think you're going to get that blue check. Right? I think I'll draw a goose egg for the evening. <laughs> That's just me. Well, the Cardinals hope not to draw a goose egg here for the rest of the game as they lead it by 13. As we close in here towards the end of the first half. Seeing Grambling State putting more pressure on the wings now, denying the wing entry pass. So now they have to go inside, and they do to Matt Kamenecki. Kamenecki's first points of the night. He's had some attempts at the free throw line, but he's 0 for 4 there. As Grambling will try a three, and they swish it through. If you, coach, you heard Coach Whitford. AJ Shine. Co heard Coach Whitford not happy with Jeremy Tyler. He gambled trying to jump the passing lane. That forced Sean Sellers to help off of his man on the drive-in kick, leaves Sellers' man open for a three-point basket. Man, Jeremy, it was, a, it was a, Rough start for Jeremy Tyler. Started 0 for 5, but since that point, Connor, he's really been on target. Well, he's got great lift on his jump shot. You saw it there just floating through the air and sees the basket really, really well. And now if you're Sean Walker, this is where you start to get worried. You don't want the Cardinals to start running away with it. As Kiapwe misses the three. And Grambling, normally a team, You'll see that likes to take a lot of time off the shot clock. 
to limit the possessions. Connor, and that's one of the reasons why their point totals have been kind of low, is they feel that's the best way from talking to Coach Walker that they feel they can stay in the game. Well, you felt like that was the strategy that they would implement today, but they've really gone pound for pound with the Cardinals, trying to push the tempo. They have slowed it up here in the latter stages of that first half, but with the Cardinals being a little bit shorthanded, you think that maybe they're trying to push the basketball, maybe to get deeper into the Cardinals bench so that you can get guys like Jeremy Tyler and Sean Sellers out of the game. Chase Cormier misses the first free throw. As tonight, he is still scoreless. This is his first trip to the free throw line. There's some host of Cardinals check back into the game. Coach Whitford also mentioned in shoot around today, Connor, that guys, I don't care if it's the first possession of the game or the last possession of the game, it matters. <laughs> so in this final minute, there's plenty of possessions left in this game, but these are just as important as every other possession that Coach Whitford and his staff. Well, that's just part of gaining experience as a basketball team. The Cardinals lost so many close games, 14 of them within 10 points a season ago, and they really just didn't know how to win basketball games. It comes from inexperience. Again, another inexperienced team here this season. Belcaster drills it under 40 seconds to go. 39-22, he's still perfect from downtown. And now there's a clock issue. It's stuck, it was stuck at 28.1, and now the officials are going to go over to the monitor and see how much time should be off of it. It was stuck after Belcaster drilled the three. But Luke, you're exactly right about every possession of a basketball game mattering. It doesn't matter if it's 39 to 22 right now. We saw it in the game against IUPUI. The Cardinals lose by a possession. They lose by a blink of an eyelash, 71 to 69. And if you look back in the earlier stages of the game, the Cardinals had 25 turnovers. You eliminate one of those turnovers, you have another possession in your back pocket and perhaps a chance to tie or win that basketball game late at the Coliseum on Saturday. Well, you mentioned those tough losses a year ago. Down by three against Toledo under five minutes at Worthen and in Toledo, Ohio. They had a seven point lead under five minutes against Western Michigan who ended up representing the Mid-American Conference in the NCAA Tournament. And of course, they were up seven with 36 seconds left at Central Michigan in Mount Pleasant and lost that game. So that's been a common nature. And a lot of times you can look back at plays early in the first half, early in the second half, that come back to bite you and make a difference in those close games. Coach Whitford telling his club they want the last shot here. Mallory. To House, House will put it up in the lane and he drills it as that ends the first half in Worthen Arena. And what a first half for the Ball State Cardinals. 41-22 as the students, the Ness, they're into the game. They're excited with the Cardinals up by 19. And here's a look at it, Connor, as we go to break. Well, they feed Franco House right at the nail. He uses his physicality, plants that right foot and spins off his man, shielding him away, using his body to avoid the shot blocker. Perfect execution there from the Cardinals, saving the basketball for the last, sh last shot. When we come back, we're gonna have our halftime report. Cardinals lead it 41-22. You're watching Ball State Men's Basketball on SportsLink TV. Ready unsuspecting TVs and laptops in a U-verse home? We're about to compare you to Xfinity. When two HD movies are playing in a U-verse home, their fastest internet slows down. Two HD movies in an Xfinity home? The internet stays fast because it's 2014. Hello? Ugh, so last season. Exactly. Fast never goes out of fashion. And as the clock ran down, I shanked the jumper. And took the big trophy home. And Aunt Jane. I guess I did all right. But look at them. Cradle of coaches, Hall of Famers. And Dad ran in the Olympic trials. Your cousin played in the Sweet 16. And how about the College World Series? That was awesome. If only you I can. can. You both can. I'm already proud of you. Now, who gets these? Me! The Mid-American Conference. Generations of champions since 1946. 
It's only November. Hi, Santa. Hello, Claire. Black Friday means sweet deals. A new Ford with a $1,000 Amazon.com gift card. It comes with almost any Ford you want. Everybody wants a new Ford. A great way to start your holiday shopping. Now get a Fusion with a $1,000 Amazon.com gift card. Or get zero for 72 plus 1500 cash back. Or lease for just $189 a month. Hurry, before they're all gone. Ball State Sports Link is bigger than ever. The best stories in Ball State sports, live game production, award-winning studio shows, and more. It's only from Ball State Sports Link, an immersive learning production. We created a counseling program to help those living with HIV. I found my calling by tackling a global issue in my local community. It paved the way to Columbia University to study with Ivy League scholars. Ball State, education redefined. Welcome back inside Johnny Worthen as we're at halftime. Cardinals lead 41-22 over the Grambling State Tigers. Welcome to your courtside, everybody. Great to have you with us tonight. And Connor, of course, a great Ball State Sports Link show is out of the shadows, which takes you behind the scenes of this Ball State men's basketball team. Jeremy Tyler so far tonight, he's playing a critical role. He's got eight points. He's made three field goals. And Ball State Sports Link did a great story, a feature story on Jeremy Tyler. Let's take a look. The East Side. One of the most dangerous areas of Indianapolis is home to Arsenal Tech, the city's first public school to win a state championship in 34 years. It's also the place that IU Kokomo guard Jerome Campbell and his little brother, Ball State freshman Jeremy Tyler, call home. Growing up with Jerome was difficult because he was the older brother, you know, he always got things before me. And I had two older sisters too, so you know, they sometimes they always gang up on me when I was being a younger child. Growing up, we always played one-on-one -on -one against each other. Um, every time, if the sun was out, we was outside playing one-on-one. -on -one. They uh, love just playing together and just kind of outdoing each other. When we were little, he would never be able to beat me one-on-one. -on -one. And I would never let him live that down. Like, and he would always tell me, one day I'm gonna beat you, one day I'm gonna beat you, and the day that I beat you, you can't say nothing else. We were actually around the corner from my grandparents' house. We were at this church that always had a basketball goal. The day, like, I couldn't hit a thing. And when Jeremy's on, He's on, like, for a fact, he does not miss. I told him I was gonna beat him, and I remember I shot the funniest looking shot. Like, he, I think he fouled me, and I shot it, and it went in. Jeremy beat him when he comes in the house, just like, I, I beat him, I beat him, I got him. I got him, Grandpa, I told him I was gonna get him. I told him, I, and it hadn't been the same since then. The fact that he hit and he ran off and ran home and ran into my grandparents' house and told them I won off a, a, a foul shot and I did all of this, it was like, dude, stop, it's just one game. But to him, it's like, I finally beat you. You, you always used to beat me and, and never said I could beat you. And when I finally did it, it, it just feels real good. Just that, that brother rivalry that we had, he always said he, he, I would never beat him, but then I finally got him, and I just wanted to let everybody know that I, uh, little brother could beat the big brother. Little brother's sharpshooting put an end to the game, but only fueled their rivalry. Who wins? You guys play one-on-one -on -one today? Me. Most, most definitely me. Why? Because, uh, I don't know, I just, I can't have that mindset for him to beat me. I just, I feel like I'm better than my brother. One on one, Jerome is mean on defense. Oh, me, of course. But Jeremy is a better shot than Jerome, so he could probably beat him out in points. I can't pick because, of course, they're both my sons and I love them both, but we all know who's going to win, so I'm just going to say it like that. <laughs> the brothers' development, both on and off the court, was guided by a familiar voice. They don't want to hear my mouth. You know, they don't want to hear me. Uh, and the best way to shut me up is to do your piece. You do your job, we're all good. We used to be the only ones in the gym at night just working out. 
Every time we worked out, he never took it easy on us. He always told us that somebody was in the gym working harder than us, longer than us, to get us ready for high school, college, or the next step, basically. If you're gonna do something that you love, why not be as best that you can be at it? We didn't work out like for the next level, we worked out for the, the next two levels. So when we was in middle school, we worked out like getting better for high school. And when I was in high school, I, would, I didn't work out for high school. I did college workouts. I, I did college running, I stayed in shape. You know, I shot probably over a thousand shots a night sometimes. When, when I see it slacking maybe, then yeah, I'm gonna say something. But, but the great piece of it is, is that I don't have to do that anymore. I, I, they're, they're maturing to be good young men. I'm thankful for my grandfather, you know. He, um, he was a father figure for me when my father went there. Not only was he a father, but he was also a grandfather. He's a friend, he was a coach. He is basically everything that I really needed them to have as they were growing up because they didn't have that male figure. They just had me and my mom. We never really had a father figure in our household up until we uh, moved in with my grandparents. And my grandfather, he completely filled in that father role. Like, even though he's my grandfather, I consider him a father to me. He really showed them how to be men. He did everything that a father would do to his son to get him ready for the next step. My goal for them was totally different from what their goal was. Their goal is to play college ball and maybe even go to the league or something, you know. My goal was free education. You know, I want everybody to go to college for free. Coach Whitford had gone all, all over the country, he or his staff, to see Jeremy and watch him through the whole process. And I think they developed a bond. We did an, an official visit. Uh, Jeremy watched the team and Coach Whitford, my wife and I, were up in the, the uh, stands. Jeremy's dribbling the ball, he's looking around and he's, he's just, I don't know, in awe. Um, I told Jeremy that in the beginning of the process, anytime you feel like this is the spot for you, then you shut it down. That next morning, I told my grandfather, I think I want to commit here. He told me I could shut it down when I felt like I was at home. And he said, I feel like this is the place I want to be. I like this. Uh, I don't need to go anywhere else. He said, well, if you sure, go shake that man's hand, because that's your word. So I shut it down. I, sh I shook Coach Whitford's hand. Once he shook his hand, you're locked in. It's no longer a verbal commitment. It's a man-to-man -man commitment. He got up and shook my hand and looked me in the eye and said, Coach, I want to come to Ball State. And, uh, it was a big day, and it's, it's how Jeremy was raised. It's a, uh, you know, um, he knew when he looked me in the eye and shook my hand and said it man to man that that was as good as gold. Great story produced by the Oots crew out of the shadows. It's 41-22, Cardinals all over the Tigers. We're going to take a short break. When we come back, we're going to go through the statistics and some first half highlights. You're watching Ball State Men's Basketball on SportsLink TV. Uh, can you help me move? Oh, you know what? I'm stuck at the office. Hi, I'm moving. No problem, sir. You can get your Xfinity services installed on the date you choose or have a self-install kit sent to your new home. Thank you. Finally get some help moving. Call 1-855-MOVE-EDGE today. The Mid-American Conference. We come from many places. We're as different as the games that we champion. But behind every great play, Beneath every uniform lies something even greater. Because the real goal is building better people. The Mid-American Conference. Sportsmanship for life since 1946. Oh, it's only November. Hi, Santa. Hello, Claire. Black Friday means sweet deals. A new Ford with a $1,000 Amazon.com gift card. It comes with almost any Ford you want. Everybody wants a new Ford. A great way to start your holiday shopping. Now get a Fusion with a $1,000 Amazon.com gift card. Or get zero for 72 plus 1,500 cash back. Or lease for just $189 a month. Hurry. Before they're all gone. 
Indiana lawmakers have replaced thousands of paper documents with iPads. Ball State created a special app, and my team integrated it into the complex legislative process. My next step, one of the nation's top law schools. Ball State, education redefined. Cardinals all over the Grambling State Tigers. Connor, let's take a look at how it started, and it began with a huge Sean Sellers three-pointer. Sean Sellers came into the game shooting 69% from downtown. He picks up right where he left off last Saturday against IUPUI. Telvin Marshall shows his athleticism with a nice spin move, but there's Sean Sellers again. He's a right-handed shooter, but he can do it right, he can do it left. He doesn't need any rhythm either. He can stroke it from wherever you put Sean Sellers on the floor. And another highlight, Rocco Belcaster says, hey, Onion, I can stroke it as well. Well, I appreciate him picking up the slack for me. We didn't want uh, my player to watch to come out and lay an <laughs> egg here tonight, so he had a solid first half with three three-pointers. He's been impressive so far. Jeremy Tyler as well, been impressive. Eight points so far in the first half for him, and there's the second Belcaster three-pointer. Really good off the catch as Vic Gill gets involved here. Want to see him get more involved in the second half, sort of see his offensive game and see what the Ball State Cardinals have in Vic Gill on that side of the court. There was Francis Kiapawe and then Franco House right before the halftime buzzer went off, gave the Cardinals a 41-22 lead. And let's dive into these statistics a little bit more. Connor wants to out the yield. Definitely the rebounding margin. The Cardinals on top by six. They were out physical last Saturday at IUPUI. The Cougars dominated inside 44 to 22 as far as points in the paint were concerned. So the Cardinals not overpowering uh, Grambling State down low, but still it's good to see them have a, have a sizable margin on the glass. The Cardinals continuing the to win the rebounding margin as well, something they've done the past two games. We have the second half coming up. We're going to take a short break. You're watching Ball State Men's Basketball on SportsLink TV. Ball State SportsLink is bigger than ever. The best stories in Ball State sports, live game production, award-winning studio shows, and more. It's only from Ball State SportsLink, an immersive learning production. Dancing is my passion. I never imagined it could help children with autism, transforming their lives and mine. I've learned I can make an impact that will last a lifetime. I love to dance and was born to teach. Ball State, education redefined. 41-22, Ball State leads it at halftime as we're just over a minute here as we get ready for the second half. As you see, good old Coach Whitford. There's Coach Thornton, Coach Peters. Two guys, Connor, that are new to the coaching staff this two year. Two guys that are new to the coaching staff. The Cardinals, of course, missing Billy Wright and Brett Nelson. Nelson going over to Marquette as Billy Wright takes the head coaching job at Western Illinois. But there are great additions as Coach Peters comes from a very good basketball family. For more on Coach Thornton, let's start to our sideline reporter, Matt Craig. Well, assistant coach Brian Thornton welcomed the birth of his first child yesterday, a beautiful baby girl, Michaela Thornton. I haven't had a chance to talk to Ball State women's basketball coach Brad Saley yet, but um, I'm <laughs> guessing Michaela Thornton might be a target down the road. Coach Brady Sally, I, I think he's watching. I think he's already got tabs with Coach Thornton. And yeah, his daughter. I, I think Lionel Messi, he set a record for his son being only six months old and receiving a contract <laughs> offer to play soccer. But I think that would be a new record, only one day old. And Coach Sally already out on the recruiting trail, recruiting Coach Thornton's daughter. All right, quite Mr. a story. All right, Mr. Chicago Fire, <laughs> you had to bring up the soccer <laughs> reference, right? Is that like contracted? Like, do you have to get a soccer reference there? I, I mean, soccer, baseball <laughs> last year when Eastern Michigan came to town. So, just making it relevant to what's <laughs> going made, on in the, you made in it the world relevant. outside of Worthen Arena. You made it relevant. Remember that. Connor Onion made soccer relevant in the Ball State Grand. Uh, I State think Pele Grand. has something to say about that. I don't think. <laughs> I don't think I can do what he did to make soccer relevant, but I'm trying. One shameless plug at a time. One shameless plug at a time. So 41-22, Grambling State trails by 19 as we begin the second half. And on the floor will be Talvin Marshall. We got Chase Cromer, Kyle Williams, Richard Freeman, and A.J. Shine for Grambling. Franco House, Jeremy Tyler, Sean Sellers. Kayla Mallory and Matt Kemenecki for the Cardinals, Connor. 
Be interested to see if Trambling State goes to some full court man-to-man -man pressure. They've shown zone pressure in the full court, but trailing by close to 20 points. Likely to see a little bit of that, a little bit of a sense of urgency here in the second half defensively. Nice rebound by the Cardinals. We mentioned that advantage they have had, not just in this game, but on the season. Cards were strong last year, too, and a big part of that was thanks to some guy named Majuk Majuk. They are again this year, Connor. Double-digit rebounding advantage in the past two games. They do miss Majuk Majuk, though. 2012, 2013, third in MAC rebounding a season ago. They were first in MAC rebounding, and that was due, obviously, in large part to Majuk Majuk in the two years that he came over from the junior college ranks at Midland College, but still trying to develop Medang to sort of be that guy that's similar to Majuk Majuk. The Cardinals lacking in size this season might not be as dominant on the glass without Majuk Majuk, but still, once Medang comes along, they should be back to dominance as far as back rebounding is concerned. Coach Whitford not happy with that turnover, points to Francis Kiapawe to get into the game immediately. As you can see him yelling out to his Cardinals now as they go back to work offensively. That was only their fifth turnover of the night. Obviously an improvement from the 25 that they had on Saturday against IUPUI. Tyler's open and he drills it that's from just the left corner. That's just selfless there from Sean Sellers. He has an open shot at the top of the key, but Jeremy Tyler is more open. The way Sean Sellers has been shooting the basketball, that's hard to pass up. 44-24 now, 11 points for Jeremy Tyler. He's in double digits. The only Cardinal tonight that has reached double digits to this point. Good Ramble. defense there, cutting off the baseline by Franco House, forcing the ball back towards midcourt. Telvin Marshall had a great start to the game. He's the leading scorer for Grambling, but with that shot, he's now 5 of 11, and Franco House slams it home. At 270 pounds, he's not stuffing that off of two feet. At 240 pounds, and with the highest standing vertical on the team, it's an easy dunk this season for Franco House. He is just causing nightmares for Sean Walker right now. As Coach Walker trying to encourage his Tigers to stay in this basketball game. And there's Telvin Marshall. Now he's got 12 points on the night. Goes to 6 of 12, so 50% from the floor. Well, there's the discipline that Jeremy Tyler needs to develop defensively. He leaves his feet on the ball fake, and Marshall's able to sneak by him on the right block. And again, you got to credit Grambling State here early, Connor. They're really coming out defensively and attacking Ball State. Defensively, they're attacking Ball State, but they have a good game plan in place when Grambling State's trying to pressure the wings. They're content with going back door, finding Franco House and the other big men slipping to the basket. Cardinals now lead the game by 20. As Francis Kiapole on the floor running the point for the Cardinals. And we've seen Jeremy Tyler bring the point at some times this year. Tonight, though, he's strictly playing the two with Kiapole at the one. Seeing a 2 3 zone here. Franco House lays it in. And Connor, you mentioned that 2 3 zone. They worked on that and shoot around the day because they haven't seen zone yet this year. This is going to be no. the first time they've seen zone since a scrimmage before the season. And it's great preparation for when they see Eastern Michigan twice this season, a Mid-American Conference West foe. Eastern a season ago, they return their best defender in Carrington Ward, but a year ago, best in the nation as far as defensive field goal percentage is concerned. So not only do they run zone, which is unique for the Cardinals to see, they run it really, really well. And to see a little bit of it in the non-conference will do wonders for the Cardinals. First team foul this half for the Cards. 22-point lead for Ball State as they continue to open it up here on Grambling as Big Gill will check into the game for Franco House. Franco so far tonight, four for five from the field with eight points and three rebounds. But right now, Cardinals trying to stifle their defensive skills as Grambling State looks to work their way back into this game. Nice finish down low there, Connor. Help side defense was non-existent there for the Cardinals. They get pick and roll, do a good job of hedging with Matt Kibanecki getting a hand in the passing lane, but he needs men behind him on the opposite block once the double team comes. Six 
Sellers, long three pointer, can't go, and Kemenecki. We'll see who they call the foul on, and it's going to be Matt Kemenecki. So Grambling State will get the basketball when we come back. It's 48-28. Cardinals lead it by 20. You're watching SportsLink Men's Basketball. The Mid-American Conference. We come from many places. We're as different as the games that we champion. But behind every great play, beneath every uniform, lies something even greater. Because the real goal is building better people. The Mid-American Conference. Sportsmanship for life since 1946. can watch my DVR shows anyway. Take your DVR shows anywhere. The X1 Entertainment Operating System, only from Xfinity. Back to Worthen Arena, Ball State leads it by 20 points. Ball State SportsLink students and staff are proud to wear clothing provided by Nike. Nike supports the students in SportsLink. Just do it online at nike.com. Thank you, Matt Craig. 48-28 as Craig alerted to you. Cardinals all over the Grambling State Tigers here in the second half. And tonight as the Cardinals do lead it by 20 and this is the first of many games obviously to come this season Connor for Ball State. They travel to Eastern Illinois Indiana State. That's a big one December 6th right here in Worthen Arena. Looking for some payback too on the football field as the Cardinals dropped one to the Sycamores earlier on, you earlier on in the on. season. But some interstate rivalry games. You got Indiana State, Valparaiso, a team that beat the Cardinals right here on SportsLink TV a season ago. So some chance, some chances for some revenge for this Ball State men's basketball team. The Fighting Tory Foxes. That's what I call Indiana State. 48-28 as Grambling with the basketball. Right now for the Tigers, Telvin Marshall, really one of the few to show up offensively. He's got 12 of the 28 points. They're doing a good job getting to the lane and driving and kicking for open jump shooters. They're just not knocking down jump shots as they've been abysmal from the field this season. Bottom five nationally, nationally from three-point land, 18%. And from the field, 32%. That's bottom 10 in the nation as well. Well, and you also got to factor in all of the transfers and players leaving the program for Grambling as well. They lost their leading scorer a year ago, Antoine Scott, to Colorado State. That's a lot of points, and that's a lot of that's a lot of production, Connor, that you lose. He was really deterred by the coaching change when Sean Walker came in. Didn't really want to start over. And at Colorado State, it's proving to potentially be a mistake for him as he had a chance to be the leading scorer here for the Tigers a season ago. But in five games with Colorado State, he's only scored three points. As that ball is going to be bat out of bound and stay on the end of the Grambling State Tigers as they trail by 20. And you mentioned Sean Walker, and he's had a lot of great success in his coaching career, which is why they hired him at Grambling. The current Grambling president, Cynthia Ward, she previously worked at East Carolina. He, he certainly has a tall task ahead of him. He inherited a program. We mentioned the recent woes as far as winning basketball on the court that 45 game losing streak that was snapped a season ago but also academically this was a team in Grambling State that had a postseason ban thrown on them a season ago the NCAA they measure something that's called the academic progress rate and to determine the eligibility of teams for the postseason you have to reach a projected graduation rate of 50% for your student athletes and Grambling State did not 
So not only off the court, but on the court, he has a tall task in his first season. Remember, remember in the first half when I said maybe that's not Big Gill's range? Ah, I lied. He just knocked down that three-pointer. <laughs> <laughs> Coming into his own, looking to make him an inside out player. Jeremy Tyler, breakaway land. Jeremy Tyler. Now the Cardinals are starting to really push it and get out in front over the Grambling State Tigers. Well, he's not technically fundamental defensively. He will jump the passing lane every once in a while and use his quickness. A lot of times now it's just a matter of being in the right position for Jeremy Tyler and knowing when to take those risks. That was the right time to take that risk because he soared for a breakaway layup. Richard Freeman, zero points tonight. He had zero against Purdue. So he's trying to avoid going back-to-back -back games scoreless as Coach Whitford looks on. Richard Freeman playing in his home state tonight, a Lawrence Central grad. Again, he has great leaping ability, strong left hand, but the Cardinals have really been keying on him and eliminating him on the offensive side. And you see Richard Freeman jogging up the floor. 53-28. Talked about Jeremy Tyler and Sean Sellers playing with Division I recruits. So did Richard Freeman played AU ball when he was at Lawrence Central with Purdue's Rafael Davis. So he's been around a lot of winning basketball as well. And Freeman still just can't buy a bucket right now. He's struggling from the floor. Freeman the night now 0 for 4. He does have two rebounds. As you see Sean Walker there. Excuse me, I said East Carolina earlier. It was Elizabeth City State is where he coached and played. Division two level. 196 and 172 in his time there. Won the CIAA title game in 2007. It was the school's first championship in 26 years. But like you mentioned, the most important part of that, Connor, was the fact they won the GPA award, best team GPA award, as Belcaster drills the three-pointer. Because that's been a point of emphasis for Grambling as they continue to rebuild, is not just rebuild what's on the floor, but in the classroom as well. Right, obviously it's an emphasis to restore academic prominence first because if you're not getting it done in the classroom, it doesn't matter if you're undefeated, you're not going to the postseason. As Bo Calhoun will get called for a block. As Rocco Belcaster knocked down the three on the other end moments ago. But still an uphill climb for Coach Walker and company. They're picked to finish last in the SWAC. And a lot of transfers, like you mentioned before, and only one player that really jumps off the page at you and has garnered all SWAC honors. That's A.J. Shine, a second-team preseason All-Macker. So really trying to put together the pieces, sort of bring in his style of recruits, a lot like Coach Whitford. Grambling State, they are Division I, so they can make the NCAA tournament. Now they've never made it. They're still let's struggling trying to push through. Let's not get ahead of ourselves there <laughs> with Grambling State. I think they're a few years from being considered oh a beast in the SWAC. Well, that's always a goal. And no doubt, if you ask Sean Walker, there are definitely a lot of things they need to work on before that's even the realm of possibility as there's that pressure defense, and that's going to be a kick ball and stay with Ball State. It's a bailout kick there for Caleb Mallory, looking a little bit timid with the basketball. But you got to give credit to Caleb Mallory. I mean, this was a young man last week, had no idea that he'd really be in the position he is now. We mentioned earlier in the broadcast how he was the fourth point guard on the depth chart, and he found out less than 48 hours. He's worked hard. He, he gave the start. guys gave the guys a good look as a practice squad player a year ago, and he has the right people around him. Jawan Scaife, former Ball State standout, Bonzi Wells, also in Kayla Mallory's family. So he has the right people, right people in his ear, teaching him the game of basketball. And the Cardinals are on the right side of the scoreboard. 56-29, Cardinals lead it. You're watching Ball State men's basketball on Sports League TV. It's been a journey that you know, you, it seems like it's been a long time ago. You know, every time you see the scar on her face, it kind of remind her, you know, that what's real important in life. You just know you, you've got to go in and you got to be strong and you go do it 
and you get it taken care of. And, and she was like that from the beginning. For her to be so mature about it, for her to be so strong about it, and I think that gave everybody else confidence and that gave everybody else strength. Fifty six twenty nine Cardinals all over Grambling State. But there is a really good connection on that Grambling State coaching staff Connor Ray Martin spent eight seasons at North Carolina State with head coach Jim Valvano. He was on that run to the NCAA National Championship in 1983. They also racked up two ACC titles, six trips to the NCAA tournament and I mentioned that national championship run in 1983. Well, that national championship run, he had a chance to see it in person, that Lorenzo Charles dunk at the buzzer. That was quite a scene, seen it on TV numerous times, but he was there live in person to experience the thrill of NC State shocking everybody and winning a national title. And not only that, he was also a part as a player. He played basketball up north in South Bend, and he was on the Notre Dame team that ended the 88 game win streak of UCLA. I think he's been on some good historic basketball moments to say the least. I think so too. As Belcaster tried to add to the three point field goal total for Ball State. And how about Matt Kimenek? Great effort to knock it away and give it right back to the Cardinals. But Sellers can't finish the deal. You're not gonna see many air balls for that man. Oh boy, Matt Kimenecki almost got me excited there, Connor Onion. I wanted to explode, but unfortunately, he was fouled and will go to the free throw line for two shots. Well, Luke, I know I've heard you're calling a Chris Bond dunk <laughs> before, but Chris Bond out at Ball State due to graduation, but Matt Kamenecki trying to inject some life into this Ball State crowd, too. We got 11.22 to go. <laughs> There's still plenty of time left. When Matt comes back, we'll tell him to dunk it next time and actually finish the deal. He's, and there we go. Man, I almost, I almost jumped the gun there. That's his first made free throw of the night. He was 0 for 4 until that time. It's the second time this season we've seen him lacking a little bit of lift. IUK came into town last Monday and he was stuffed by the rim. And similar sequence there where he tried to take flight, just couldn't elevate all the way. You wonder if the back injuries that he's had in the past have sort of limited his ability to get to the rim. Well, you're going to have back issues when you take as many charges as Matt Kamenecki has in his career. <laughs> That's how he injects Ridiculous. life into a crowd and into a team. <laughs> Ridiculous amount of times. As the Cardinals in full control and a nice spin around shot there by Lonnie McElwain. Also another Indiana kid played at Northwest High School, home of the Space Pioneers. Oh, Rocco couldn't get it to go. But the Cardinals get another shot at it. Kayla Mallory weaving his way through the Tiger defense. And Franco House finishes. Tell you what Caleb does a good job of. It's leaning over the bounce, protecting the basketball with his off hand, dribbling with his eyes up. Francis Chiapue, a guy that's coming to the game and run the point. He's been dribbling with his head down a little bit, not seeing the entire floor. And that's to be expected when he's a little bit rusty coming off a knee and injury. Sean Sellers with an acrobatic save, but unfortunately it will go right back to Grambling. He saves it for the Tigers. As that was Mark Gray who brought up the floor and the three pointer goes long for the Tigers for Chase Cormier. And look at Sellers muscle his way through, he gets the foul called. Now finish. that's where Rocco Belcaster is an asset. He skies for the defensive rebound, then he can bring the ball up the floor by himself. Not a lot of six foot seven basketball players can say that. Usually they're gonna dish it off and look to outlet to their point guard, but Rocco Belcaster plenty capable of getting Ball State into their offensive sets. As Sellers now at the free throw line and he makes the first. And speaking of Rocco Belcaster. Substitutions. Coach Whitford told me earlier today, he said, Luke, I've coached basketball for a long time. As an assistant, head coach now, only for a year, heading into his second year, I've never had the coach and teach a player three positions. And Rocco's the first. He's had to learn three positions. And he says, I trust him. He said, that's his basketball IQ. 
is I trust them to know that he can learn those positions, but three different positions on the basketball floor. It's really interesting that we're raving about him because <laughs> a season ago, it didn't seem like it would be likely that we would even see him on the floor. If he'd be on the team. I mean, if you'd be on know. the team with the recruiting class that the Cardinals brought in this season, you didn't know if there would be not even a scholarship, but even a spot as a walk-on on this team. But he's put in the work, and he proves that he belongs on this Ball State roster. You hear so many stories about walk-ons, not just in basketball, but on the football gridiron as well. And you know Coach Whitford admires those guys' work ethic because they're just doing it for the love of it. They're obviously not getting a scholarship. Right, Kendon Crowder's a guy that just graduated from this program, and he's an assistant on the Cardinals basketball team now. He went from high school, only playing in his freshman season. There was seven years between Kendon Crowder playing in a competitive basketball game. And he came out, our last men's basketball broadcast on Sportslink TV, and he had a career high in points against Eastern Michigan. I called him my buddy that <laughs> game too, <laughs> which he is, you know. So I don't know if it's something in the air, in the Muncie <laughs> air, about these, these walk-ons making an impact, but Rocco Belcaster, only a sophomore. As Mading Falk enters the game, and Mading's a guy, Connor, last year he had 12 points against Toledo, 14 against Western Michigan. Those were in back-to-back -back games, a two-game stretch he'll never forget. And yeah, Majuk battled some foul trouble against Toledo and then an injury against Western Michigan. So Mading had to play extended minutes, and he showed that he's really good from the mid-range when it comes to set shots. He's not going to be a guy that comes off of screens and shoots jump shots from 15 feet. But if you get it to him when he has a chance to set his feet, He'll knock it down from 15 to 17. Of course, Mading and Majuk, both of them, Majuk Majuk, who's graduated and now playing basketball professionally, as Sellers knocks down the three-pointer. 67 points now for the Cardinals. Well, that's just a commonality that we see with Ball State with their roster right now. There's some guys that need to put on the weight. There's some guys that need to slim down, like Franco Halsas, Sean Sellers, and Mading, two guys you see on the floor right now are guys that need to put a little bit more weight on before they want to be world-class players in the Mid-American Conference. Four Cardinals now are in double figures. Rocco, Sean, Franco, all with 12, and then Jeremy Tyler with 13. As a timeout is taken here on the floor, we'll keep it here in Worthen Arena with 8.31 to go. And of course, this is non-conference season right now, Connor, for the Ball State Cardinals. And they've had some success, of course, the tough overtime loss over the weekend, but they're not the only MAC team that's made some noise here in non-conference season. No, a lot of teams, Akron, Toledo, Western Michigan, three teams that you look out in the preseason to make some noise in the conference. Akron beat USC and South Carolina over the weekend without their best player, Demetrius Treadwell, and Buffalo also a team. They took Kentucky to the wire. They were up five on number one Kentucky in their non-conference slate. No doubt that they made a lot of big noise in the offseason, and the MAC sure hopes to do that this season. The students of Ball State Sports Link would like to thank the staff of WIPB TV in Muncie. Thanks to everybody at WIPB, including Bill Bryant, Rob Fultz, Keith Huffman, and our engineers in charge, Eugene Smith and Rick Martin. And obviously, Connor, with this being my last broadcast, being here for four years, I can definitely say Eugene Smith, Rick Martin, all those guys, Bill Ryan, Rob Fultz, Keith Huffman, they're a terrific group guys to work with. They make these Sportslink productions. Well, we wouldn't have them if it wasn't for them. Well, I guess you can live vicariously through me <laughs> as, as fortunately I'll have a chance to work with them for a couple years to come. But no, they've been they've been great to work with and we couldn't do it without them. Of course, Eugene Smith, Rick Martin, always in our truck right outside with an arena here early when we set up. They stay all the way through teardown. You're not going to find a better staff than here at Muncie, Indiana with WIPB. And it's no doubt been great working with them. So now let's focus back to the game, 67-32. Cardinals well on their way to evening up their record at 2-2 two and two on the season. As the Worthen Arena fans clap your hands, Connor Onion does not, which I'm very disappointed in you right now. This is your cha-cha slide, man. This is your group. Yeah, I've got to control myself a little <laughs> bit. Um, you know, 
I, I don't want to embarrass anybody on the sports link side of things. I might not be welcome back if I start clapping my hands on the cha-cha slide. We haven't heard. We may have a BallStateSports.com all-access show at the end with a Connor Onion dance-off. So stay well, tuned. I could come out of the shadows. Yeah. <laughs> I could do a little dance move, a little one-two step. So you may want to stay with us here in the final 8-13. As Sean Sellers throws that away, Richard Freeman gets his first points. Richard Freeman. And over a week. Well, he was 0 for his last 10 coming into that breakaway layup attempt. So good for him to get off the schneid. It's a lot like a baseball player. Once you see the ball hit the bat, once you see, uh, once, once you get a base hit, sort of break yourself out of a slump, points can come in bunches from there. We've done soccer, now baseball, and we work football, and I think we're getting all the major sports here in our broadcast. As that rebound found it and sure, put in. I'm sure our producer, Zach McClusack, <laughs> wants us to work in oh, hockey somewhere well, along the well, line. Well, we just did. We just we just said some NHL hockey there. 67-36 timeout called here on the floor in Worthen Arena. We mentioned the young success of this Ball State team, Connor. 78.9% of its points have come from those freshmen, sophomores. Eight freshmen and sophomores total make up the roster this year. And these are kind of normal numbers because last year, the freshmen all season long accounted for 45% of the minutes and 40%, 40 per, excuse me, 40% of the points scored. Well, with those young faces, it's certainly been Jeremy Tyler and Sean Sellers doing the bulk of the scoring. Overall, as far as the team is concerned, 46 of the team scoring in the first three games is come from Tyler and Sellers. Tyler also playing extended minutes, second in the Mid-American Conference in minutes per game. And Sean Sellers is the max leading scorer in his young career. I asked Tyson Matthews, the Ball State basketball historian <laughs> and sports information director, as Grambling pushing the press here as Jeremy Tyler gets the basketball. I asked him when's the last time that he could remember as Medin Thock lays it in. That two Cardinals that were freshmen we're in the top 10 in scoring in the Mid-American Conference. That's a hard stat to find because there's so many different points, you know, so many different uh, times during the season to figure it out. Tyson had no idea, so you know I stumped the schwa there uh, with Tyson Matthews. But that is hard to believe that two freshmen already are in the top 10 in the max scoring. Well, Tyson Matthews does a, does a great job. A lot of times, as informed as he is, you know, the show are you smarter than a fifth grader? A lot of times I feel like we need to play the game, are you smarter than Tyson Matthews? Because he just knows it all, but it's it's true. These guys have been sensational, and it's gonna be great to see them grow in this Cardinals program. 69-36, Cardinals dominating the Grambling State Tigers. We're gonna take a break. When we come back, we have much more here from More Than Arena, 69-36, Cardinals lead it. You're watching men's basketball on Sportslink TV. If you sign up for DirecTV's latest deal, prepare to be blindsided. Because they'll double your rate before you know it. And you'll find you're locked into a two-year contract that could cost you over 3000 bucks. That's why the smart choice is Xfinity. You can see all the best action in football all season long. With no surprises, don't get blindsided by DirecTV. Call 1-800-XFINITY today. It's only November. Hi, Santa. Hello, Claire. Black Friday means sweet deals. A new Ford with a $1,000 Amazon.com gift card. It comes with almost any Ford you want. Everybody wants a new Ford. A great way to start your holiday shopping. Now get a Fusion with a $1,000 Amazon.com gift card. Or get zero for 72 plus 1,500 cash back. Or lease for just $189 a month. Hurry. Before they're all gone. Fox College Sports, CBS, ESPN. Impressive clients for college students. We write, direct, and produce our Emmy-nominated programs daily. We even designed our own virtual set. Ball State, education redefined. All right, so just how efficient has Sean Sellers been this season? Obviously, he's looked great. I used the player efficiency rating uh, to just see just how good Sean Sellers has been. It's a metric used by the NBA teams. It factors in field goal percentage, three-point percentage, steals, blocks, as well as negative stats, as turnovers and fouls, all waiting, weighted according to how important they are. I plugged everything into a very complicated formula, came up with a composite score for the efficiency, 
of Sean Sellers, and it was 28.33. The NBA average is 15.0, and 28.33 would have put him second only to LeBron James last season in the NBA, guys. Sean Sellers has been pretty good so far for the Ball State Cardinals. I'd say that's pretty good. <laughs> He's close to LeBron James numbers. I don't know if... Uh, LeBron, uh, you watching tonight? Is LeBron watching somewhere? I'm sure he is. He may be playing a game right now. I don't know, but he's he probably could got, be. He's probably watching. I don't know that cat Cleveland Cavaliers team's been struggling so much. He <laughs> might want to. He might want to give it up and just listen to us. Oh my! As Rocco Sean Bell Sellers cast, to yeah. LBJ. That's that's an interesting <laughs> comparison. Yeah, I'm sure that's a comparison. He's not going to turn down. As Bellcaster's free throw swishes it through the nylon and Cardinals dominating this game tonight 70 to 36 and coach Wiffer was honest with me at practice today he said Luke really this game tonight not really about grambling it's about us it's about what we need to do how we need to execute in order to get better uh, especially considering you got this eight day layoff until they play Eastern Illinois and then you host the big game the non-conference game here in more than arena against those fighting Tory Foxes of Indiana State. Well, whether you see Grambling State as a legitimate challenge or not, it's always good to see live competition, to, as Coach Sally says, smell the popcorn and be under the bright lights in your home arena and just have a competitive atmosphere. And while the Cardinals have kept things a little bit vanilla as far as their out-of-bounds sets and offensive sets are concerned, it's still good to see Francis Giapwe and Kayla Mallory get some experience before they do see some teams in Eastern Illinois and Valparaiso and in Indiana State that will challenge them on the scoreboard. As Richard Freeman works on Big Gill down low, but a nice putback by Telvin Marshall. He almost trips and falls on his way back up the floor. Telvin tonight. 14 points. There's no doubt he's been the player of the game from Grambling State's standpoint. Definitely been impressed with him. The Cardinals facing a 2-3 zone here again. Great slip pass from Rock from Bo Calhoun rather. <laughs> Bo Calhoun, another one of those. Everyone talks about the freshman as a timeout called by Grambling State. But Connor, everyone mentioned about the main guys, you know, Sean Sellers, Jeremy Tyler. But you look at Bo Calhoun, he's in that group of Rocco and Caleb guys last year. Now, Bo did get a lot of playing time a year ago. He had 13.3 rebounds per 40 minutes. So Bo's been a guy that has had some success last year, but looking to continue to improve this year. Ball State Sports Link is an immersive learning production from the College of Communication, Information, and media and the Department of Telecommunications at Ball State. Learn more about our program online at bsu.edu slash TCOM. We're back, 17, back 72. I don't know where 17 came from. Where do you think that came from? I, I think that's I think that was your what, high school points per game average. I think that's that's why. That's what Grambling State, that was the total number of points they had at this point against Purdue <laughs> on Thursday night when they only managed to score 30 points. I think that's where that number came from. Maybe, maybe we can get, uh, maybe Zach McClusack, our producer, has got some Lion Township highlights of Connor Onion we could go to here in the second half. I, I don't <laughs> think we should because it would likely lead to me fetching water <laughs> and never taking my shooting shirt off. Well, Jeremy Tyler, I think he took his shooting shirt off a lot in high school at Arsenal Tech, and he continues his phenomenal play tonight. He sure does. He can stroke it from downtown. Just give him an inch of space, and he'll make you pay. Of course, he had that big game against IU Kokomo against his brother last week. As here's Bo Calhoun, another nice bounce pass. Tyler finishes the deal. <laughs> Biggest strength of the Ball State big men is all of them can pass. From Bo Calhoun to Bick Gill to Rocco Belcaster to Matt Kimenecki, all of them have good vision. As the Cardinals lead it 7 7, 77 to 38. Let's go to Matt Craig, our sideline reporter. Well, guys, I actually got a tweet from Paul Weller saying the broadcast is looking great, and also a shout out to Luke Martin <laughs> on the calls. Good old Paul Weller, SportsLink alum. Worked with good old Paul on West 56th Street in Indianapolis during our time with the Indianapolis Colts. As he was in the video production department with Mike Stevens, who is a, another SportsLink alum, Ball State alum. Yeah, not to toot our own horns, but we have a lot, a lot of alums yeah. around the area I think and Pit, around the country. I think Pitbull made a song about SportsLink. It's called International Love. Got people <laughs> all over the place. 
<laughs> wow. <laughs> we even I, got you, a Sportslink alum in Japan. So it truly is international. You're right. Andrew Boltemeyer. Bolte. You know how teams would always break it down at the end of the games? That's what the Andrew Boltemeyer did with Sportslink. Those were some great moments. And who knows what he's doing over there in Japan. Maybe, maybe he's watching some Sportslink TV tonight. Some, some leadership perhaps <laughs> Grambling State could use. Not yeah. sure how Andrew Boltemeyer's jump shot is, but certainly some leadership would help. No, no doubt. But 4.30 to go here in the second half. It's been all ball state tonight. Grambling did show some signs of fight early there in the first half. But really ever since Ball State started to get into the late 20s, early 30 point stages, they really started to take care of the basketball and push their way towards this big lead, Connor. Well, the Cardinals have just been too much for them. They go 10 deep while being shorthanded. Can you imagine? Once they get Jeremiah Davis and Xavier Turner back, if they can go 12 deep, how imperative that will be for them in a game like this where they're only playing with one day of rest in between contests. That could go a long way come, come conference basketball. No doubt as Rocco with a great effort to get the rebound, but it's knocked out of bounds. That takes us to our final media timeout of the night. Cardinals all over Grambling State. You're watching Ball State Men's Basketball on Sportslink TV. Today, the phone company is nickel and diming you. But tomorrow, you could be saving a fortune. Save on your home phone bill with Xfinity Voice from Comcast. Plus, text from your home number and save on your wireless bill. Switch to Xfinity Voice with unlimited talk and text for $19.99 a month for 12 months. Or step up to an Xfinity X1 triple play and save even more. Call 1-800-XFINITY today. Hundreds of real-world interviews at Ball State helped me realize the responsibility that comes with being in front of the camera. Society needs passionate journalists. Now I'm on air in D.C. with the whole world watching. Ball State, education redefined. Covering the Olympics in London as a student and seeing my work in the Chicago Tribune. That experience jump-started my career in New York City at Time Magazine and developed me into a true visual storyteller. Ball State, education redefined. Cardinals leading Grambling State 77 to 40 with 348 to go in the contest tonight. And unfortunately for the Grambling State Tigers, Connor, it's not going to get any easier. No, it's not going to get any easier as you look, they have a three game road swing in the state of Indiana, including tonight. They're at Purdue last week on Thursday. Then they go up to South Bend on Wednesday at the Purcell Center and play Mike Bray's team in the Notre Dame Fighting Irish Air Force and at Washington as well. They have TCU on their schedule, play George Washington, a team that's appeared in the tournament multiple years in the past decade. So while they've struggled, they are seeing the best that this country has to offer in college basketball. Well, when you're Sean Walker, it's a first year head coach trying to instill your, your skill set, what you want your program to resemble. Well, you're going to play a lot of programs that you kind of want to be. So it's, it's important for them to see that level of basketball, just as, the, just as it is for the Cardinals to see the Utahs of the world. They'll go to San Diego State over Christmas break. Those are two teams the Cardinals are looking to emulate as well. So a similar philosophy being implemented by Sean Walker. And it's funny talking with Coach Whitford earlier today. He goes, I know where Sean Walker's at <laughs> because I was there a year ago. And I asked Coach Whit Connor, you know, what's the biggest thing you learned? What did you take away from your first year? He said, the one thing that was unique for me is I've always been a right-hand man. I've always, I was always Sean Miller's right-hand guy. I wasn't the guy. I wasn't the voice that you hear all the time. And he's like, now there's a difference between knowing what you're doing and teaching what you're doing. And that's been what he's had to do this year more is he knows what they want to do, and now he's got to learn how to teach these guys, to teach Rocco Belcaster, to teach Bo Calhoun, but Dean Thought, who just grabbed the rebound. That's what he's got to do more, and that's why this past summer they focused on the system, not necessarily on just developing the skill set, being able to shoot in the gym. Well, in his first year, he learned what works, what doesn't work, and, of course, experience is the greatest teacher and a lot of failure in a 5-25 and 25 basketball season, 2-16 and 16 in conference, but 
It is a big adjustment being that lead voice in practice, especially when you're in a mid-major program like Ball State, because a lot of times you're going to have turnover with the assistant coaches, as they did with Billy Wright and Brett Nelson. And it's hard to develop players in a system when you don't have those guys who are your right-hand man to teach the guys while you're trying to put together a practice plan. But he's done a great job, to his credit, in developing guys that were here before he even got here. Look at Rocco Belcastro, look at Caleb Mallory, and it's paid off in working on that system over the summer. And you mentioned the word experience. And earlier today, we talked with head coach Pete Limbo, and in his press conferences, they prepare for Bowling Green on Friday. He said there is a difference between experience and being experienced. And I'm sure Coach Whitford agrees with that. He's hoping that he is now not just going through experiences, but he's experienced. You've been there. It's like tangible. It's more than just how oh, we went through an experience. You are experienced because you went through it. And now you got to continue to fight and continue to take those minor steps. Well, experience is only a positive if you learn from those experiences. And a lot of times, negatives will teach you how to do things the right way. You learn how not to do it first before you learn how to do it. And Coach Whitford is certainly a diligent guy, and he's going to learn from his mistakes. And he already has, and it's shown in the first four games. As Francis Kiapole knocks down another three-point shot. That is his second on the night. He's two of four, six points total. So both of his shots that he made the night, both field goals have been three-point jumpers. He's going to be a special guy to watch as the season continues to move forward. Well, Connor Kishore, the voice of the Cardinals on WCRD 91.3 Ball State Sports Link Radio. There's going to be a lot of good games in non-conference. They, they go out, they get another great game against a great team in San Diego State later this month. They're going to find out a lot about themselves over the next two to three weeks before Mid-American Conference play begins. They will. Last season, they only played three home games against Division I opponents. They've upped that to five this year and seven in 2015. So they're going out and getting teams that will provide them with a challenge. And more home games means more time for these young guys with eight newcomers to adjust to college and life here at Ball State. And come in American Conference time, you never know what's going to happen. It's a very calculated, premeditated plan from Coach Whitford. As you mentioned earlier in the broadcast, so many times that Ball State was just so close to winning so many big games. I mean, look at the home game against Western Michigan in which they lost in overtime on their home floor last February. That team went on to annihilate Toledo in the MAC championship game and then take on Syracuse in the NCAA tournament. That's the best team in the conference. Now, maybe they took the Cardinals a little bit lightly coming in, being the basement dwellers in the Mid-American Conference West, but it instills a confidence in you to know that you were that close with some of the conference's best teams. And the other thing to remember, too, is, and this is, you know, with, with all due respect to last year's team, you know, those guys battled every day. They didn't give up. They kept fighting. But if last year's team was that close, with this year's team, with more talent, those freshman guys mixed in, with Rocco stepping his game to a whole nother level, it could be something to watch. Ball State could be that team that could really be under the radar and surprise some folks come January, February, and March. They could. They could surprise some folks. But as Ball State's gotten better, so has the rest of the conference. Toledo, in their non-conference, they're challenging themselves as well. They're likely the favorites heading in in the MAC West in the preseason. They took on VCU. We're winning that game late in the second half. They took Oregon down to the wire the other night as well. And Western Michigan, they won the MAC championship a year ago. The only guy that's really missing from their starting lineup is Shane Whittington now playing with the Pacers. But they returned David Brown, who led the Mid-American Conference in scoring. So. While the Cardinals are better, they still have a lot of work to do to reach the level of Akron, of Toledo, of the Western Michigans of the conference. Like you told me when I was talking about the NCAA tournament and Grambling State, how they never <laughs> made it. Let's pump the brakes a little bit there, too, for I know Ball State. But you're right, though, because last year there were so many games. You know, if those late game dramatics, if they hold on to those leads, last year's record's a different story. And of course, the rest of the conference would fluctuate as well. I know you're an eternal optimist, go. but every year, every game is different. I am an optimist. There's no doubt about that. We'll see how everything plays out. As the officials still calling some fouls here late in the game, 43 seconds left till this one is done and in the books. 
As some fans agree with us here behind us. <laughs> saying, let's They're playing. just get this game over with. And the fans are playing every possession just like Coach Whitford oh, they preaches. Are. Man, they're buying in. Cardinals have been magnificent, though, from downtown tonight. 14 threes. That's the most since 2006, March of 2006, when they hit 14 against Eastern Michigan. And the school record is 16. Can they break it? <laughs> I, don't, I don't think they're going to get to it tonight with 40 seconds if left. If they really want to rub it in, <laughs> then they will. But I, I think they'll think, hold the basketball and watch the clock wind down. Yeah, I don't think Coach Whitford is a guy that would do that or his team. As Kayla Mallory will just dribble it out here. 17 seconds on the shot clock. So the Cardinals will have to put up a shot or the shot clock violation will occur. As Kiapaway misses the three and Grambling State stepped on the out of bounds line there underneath the basket and now the Cardinals will just inbound it and that should do it. That's just how their night's gone. That's how their season's gone. That's how their last couple of seasons have gone. They can never catch a break even when Ball State tries to give them one more crack at it offensively. And Francis Kiapaway will hold on to the basketball and that will do it. Ball State Grambling gave it a run there early in the first half, but the Cardinals pull out the 88-46 win. And Coach Whitford and the Cardinals improve the 2-2 two and two on the season. We got the post-game show coming up next. You're watching Ball State Men's Basketball on SportsLink TV. Ready unsuspecting TVs and laptops in a U-verse home? We're about to compare you to Xfinity. When two HD movies are playing in a U-verse home, their fastest internet slows down. Two HD movies in an Xfinity home? The internet stays fast because it's 2014. Hello? Ugh, so last season. Exactly. Fast never goes out of fashion. And as the clock ran down, I shanked the jumper and took the big trophy home. And Aunt Jane. I guess I did all right. But look at them. Cradle of coaches, Hall of Famers. And dad ran in the Olympic trial. Your cousin played in the Sweet 16. And how about the College World Series? That was awesome. If only you I can. You both can. I'm already proud of you. Now, who gets these? Me! The Mid-American Conference. Generations of champions since 1946. It's only November. Hi, Santa. Hello, Claire. Black Friday means sweet deals. A new Ford with a $1,000 Amazon.com gift card. It comes with almost any Ford you want. Everybody wants a new Ford. A great way to start your holiday shopping. Now get a Fusion with a $1,000 Amazon.com gift card. Or get zero for 72 plus 1,500 cash back. Or lease for just $189 a month. Hurry. Before they're all gone. Ball State Sports Link is bigger than ever. The best stories in Ball State sports, live game production, award-winning studio shows, and more. It's only from Ball State Sports Link, an immersive learning production. We created a counseling program to help those living with HIV. I found my calling by tackling a global issue in my local community. It paved the way to Columbia University to study with Ivy League scholars. Ball State, education redefined. Huge win, 88-46 over the Grambling State Tigers. What a night in Worthen Arena. A lot of fun watching this court side here. Connor, kind of that when you just look at this game and that we just watched, what kind of stood out to you? What was kind of your main takeaway from a Cardinal perspective? Well, the shooting of the Ball State Cardinals in the preseason, you want to establish your jump shooters. You also want to get a lot of guys involved. The Cardinals got Mading involved. We didn't see him much in the first half, but in the second half, he came in, allow him to get a little time in front of the home crowd when the lights are bright. And also, Jeremy Tyler and Sean Sellers continuing to improve upon the start that they've had in their freshman season. What a start they have had. It's going to be fun to watch these guys for years to come here in Muncie, Indiana. Well, let's go ahead and take a look at the post-game statistics here for the Cardinals. Connor, when you kind of look at the post-game stats, what stood out to you? Limiting the turnovers to 10. The Cardinals came in averaging 19 on the season. Worst in the country at taking care of the basketball. 
a season ago and winning the turnover margin a lot of times is going to lead to a victory for the Cardinals. When you're turning the basketball over 25% of the time like they were a season ago, you're not going to win many basketball games. You're not going to score many points. But 10 turnovers, 88 points, it correlates positively. And the Cardinals win the rebounding margin again by double digits. That's the third game in a row. So I know James Whitford is really going to be happy about that category. Let's go to the player of the game. All right, Connor Onion, who is your player of the game? Well, it was the same guy we had to keep our eye on coming in pregame. It's Rocco Belcaster. He was spraying from downtown tonight. Four of six from beyond the arc, five of seven overall from the field, 15 points, and throw in four rebounds from him. You leave him open, he'll make you pay, and he's going to be a matchup nightmare with his length on the outside as well as taking away attention from guys like Jeremy Tyler and Sean Sellers. It's going to be a lot of fun to watch Rocco Belcaster as well for years to come here in Worthen Arena. So, Connor, your final thoughts on the match, to, on the game tonight. Well, the Cardinals continue their non-conference slate with Eastern Illinois coming up next week. They get Indiana State in their next home game. You have to build upon what you established here tonight, taking care of the basketball, getting Francis Kiapue and Kayla Mallory more comfortable at the point guard position without Jeremiah Davis and Xavier Turner. Well, before we go, we're not done yet. Let's go through our game recap. And again, Sean Sellers, that huge three-pointer there in the first half. He started it off early, picking up right where he left off against IUPUI, where he had 22 points. And then the play of the game, this may get not top 10 on Sports Center. <laughs> the fast to the official. He was ready for he it. He was in triple threat position. He was ready to score the basketball. Jeremy Tyler knocks down the big three-point shot. Well, that was one of the three points of his total tonight, 18. Kayla Mallory did make some mistakes, but he also did a really good job driving and kicking five dimes for the point guard tonight. Wow, and Franco House with the big slam as well. That taking place in the second half. And there's Big Gill showing the long range. Good to see him get involved tonight. His first double figure scoring performance in his Ball State career. 20 points per game at Owens Community College a season ago in conference play. So he has the capability. Now it just matters as to getting him comfortable. And that is how the Cardinals got the huge 88 to 42 win in Worthen Arena. 88 to 46, the final score tonight. Well, that's going to do it for the SportsLink broadcast this semester, our final of the semester. We want to say a huge thanks to our engineers in charge, Rick Martin and Eugene Smith, our producer, Zach McClusack, director, Alex Seitz, faculty advisors, Chris Taylor, Alex Cartman, Brad Daly, Ball State Sports Information Director, Tyson Matthews. For my partners, Matt Craig, Connor Onion, I am Luke Martin saying so long for more than an arena. Cardinals get the win.